Hi, this is Mr. Weston. Today we're doing a tutorial video on associative law of addition. This, of course, is from mathdrills.com. Make sure to check out Math Drills. They have tons of great resources available on math. Make sure to check them out. There will be a link in the description below. So what we're going to discover in this video is what the associative law of addition is and how it works. Essentially, what we're going to do here is we're going to write the same numbers in the same order but well, we're going to do operations in a different order, okay? So I'm going to put plus signs in between just like it has here. Of course, we're doing addition, so we're only going to be doing adding in this video. We're not going to do uh, multiplication at all. And what the associative property tells us is that we can rearrange the parentheses to bring about a different order of which we are going to add these numbers, and we'll still get the same answer. Let me explain. So here we have that the 8 and the 5 have a parentheses around it. That means we're going to do this step first. Okay, so 8 plus 5, that gives us 13. And then we're going to add the 3 second. Okay, now what do we get when we do that process? First, we're going to do the adding the 13, sorry, 8 plus 5 to get us 13. And then we add the 3. That gets us 16 for our answer. So let's change the order, okay? So we're going to put parentheses. Parentheses, obviously is an order of operations and it's the first one. So we're gonna change where we put these parentheses and see if that gives us a different result. So I'm gonna put it around the three and the eight. If I do that, the first thing I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna do the eight plus the three. That gives me 11. And then the second thing I'm gonna do is the 11 plus the five. See how I did this first this time, okay? And then second, I added the five. Just change the order, okay? That's the associate property. If I change the order, what happens? I get the same thing, okay? So that's the big idea in this video and in this worksheet is we're gonna change the order and we're gonna see that it equals the same thing. Just because I have limited space, I'm gonna go ahead and jump to number three. So with number three, again, we're gonna just rewrite the same numbers in the same order. So I have 14 plus one plus 24. I'm not writing the parentheses yet, okay? And now I'm gonna change where I write these parentheses. So I'm gonna change it that we're gonna do this step first. So if we're gonna do uh, the left side of this equal sign, we would do one plus 24, the parentheses first, that gives us 25. Then we would add 14 and that would give us 39. If we change the order of the parentheses, the order in which we conduct these operations with addition, will it change the result? So we do 15 here and then we're gonna add that to 24. And you can see that we get the same answer. We get 39 again, okay? So even though we changed the order in which we performed these addition operations, it doesn't change the result of the problem. And that's the associate property. That's all there is to it. So for all these problems, if you want, you could just copy down everything first, okay? So just rewrite these numbers. Up to you how you do it. You could just do one problem at a time. You could write down all the numbers first and then do parentheses, however you want to do it. And I'm giving some space just so it uh, gives me some room to put the parentheses. And then I'm going to change the order in which I write the parentheses. So I'm going to put them around these ones now. So 2 plus 59 first and then add 68. Okay, I'm just going to double check the uh, instructions in case I need to um, calculate the value of each side. Okay, so it's just asking me to change the order. So it, even if you didn't know what you're doing in terms of math operations, you can just change the order of the parentheses and that's all there is to this worksheet. But it's really important to understand the whole point of this worksheet is to understand that we can change the order in which we do the addition, which steps we do the addition. And it doesn't matter because if it's all addition, we can change the order around in which we do the operations, okay? Not necessarily jumble up the numbers. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying the order in which we conduct these numbers. Now, number six is a little tricky. I wanna do this one because we have two sets of parentheses. So, um, I'm gonna give you a couple options for this one. I'm gonna change colors just so it's a little bit more apparent. So first, I'm gonna keep the first parenthesis the same, okay? So I'm gonna keep this big one, see how there's this outside parenthesis, and then I'm gonna put this inside parenthesis different, okay? So now I have two sets of parentheses, and when you have two sets of parentheses, you always have to start at the innermost parentheses. So order of operation says that we start with parentheses, but if you have parentheses within parentheses, you have to start at the innermost parentheses. I like to think of it as like a house. So if we had a house here, think about like the different rooms in the house. Not the best house in the world. Yeah, let's put a window. 
Okay, but if you had a house, you'd want to start at the innermost room and then work your way outside of the house. Okay, so that's just an analogy that I like to use. It's like a house, start at the innermost room. Just like parentheses, you're going to start at the innermost parentheses. So let's go ahead and start with my original, the left side. I already changed up the order of the parentheses on the right side, but let's see what happens on the left side. We have 9, and then we're going to add 11. Okay, so the first step is going to be our second step. And then this is going to be our third step. This time we have three steps because, because we have multiple operations going on, multiple addition. So we're going to do 9 plus 11. The first step was 9. Second step was plus 11. Okay, so that's 20. And then my third step is add 4. I get 24. Let's check the right side now. So I have 8 plus 11 now. That's 19. Then I have to add 1. Okay, that's 20. And then I have to add that 4, and that's 24. I got the same thing, okay? Even though I changed the order of the parentheses, I got the same thing. Now, that's not the only option for these uh, for this right side, okay? So I made the outer parentheses there. I can even change it so the outer parentheses are over here. And then I have even two options over here. I could put it around the 8 or the 11 or the 11 and the 4. I'm going to put it around the 11 and the 4, okay? And then you'll see that it's the same thing. So I have 11 plus 4, that's 15. I'm going to add the 8. That's 23, and then I have to add the one. That's my third step, and I get 24. I get the same answer. Okay, now um, there more problems are like this. Okay, you see that we have another double set of parentheses on these other problems. Again, you can just change the order. I'm going to show you that real quick, and then I'm going to talk about why this is important. Okay, so first let me show you this, and then we'll get to why this is important. So again, I can change the parentheses so it's around these ones. Okay, and then my innermost parenthesis I can still keep around the 75 plus the three but it's going to change uh, the order in which I do it, but not change the answer. So I could do that for number nine. There's a couple options for number nine. Now, why is this important? This is important because we can group numbers with addition into logical sequences that makes it easier to add. And what I mean by that is if I were doing, um, let's say, this one, for example, I think it would make more sense to do this step first versus 49 plus 31 plus 10. I think 31 plus 10 would not be my first step. I would do 49 plus 31 because that's going to give me uh, an ending in zero. If I do 49 plus 31, that's going to give me an answer of 80, and then I add that to 10, and that's going to take me to 90. So I think it's helpful to group them when you're doing addition into little chunks that make it easier to add, especially in units of 10. Or 5, for example, here, 13 plus 2, that's a logical first step because it gives us 15, and 15 is just an easier number to work with. Okay, And then we could add 10 from that and then move on from there. So finding different groups to create groups of 10, uh, here's another one. I would much prefer this option versus this one because I have 14 plus 1, that gives me 15, and 15 is just an easier number to work with. I wouldn't want to do 14 plus 24 first, that's a little difficult. But getting it into a 15 more recognizable number, I think is helpful. And lastly, number two is a great example too. If I have 17 plus 10 plus three, what I can do is, I mean, it doesn't show in parentheses, but I, mentally I would do 17 plus three first, that gives me 20, and then I add it to 10 and that gives me 30. Okay, so there's different ways that we can group it. Or we could just do 10 plus three, 13. Okay, put the parentheses here and then add that to 17, that gives me 30. There's just different options that we have. It allows a more flexibility, the associative law of addition, gives us more flexibility in terms of how we do these mental processes, okay? So if you have any questions on this worksheet, please leave a comment. I hope you like this video. Make sure to check out more videos I have in the math drills playlist, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on Wes Explains Best.